Isaiah 43, verse 9 to 10. Gather the nations together, assemble the people of the world. Which of their idols has ever foretold such things? Which can predict what will happen tomorrow? Where are the witnesses of such predictions? Who can verify that they spoke the truth? But you are my witnesses, O Israel, says the Lord. You are my servant. You've been chosen to know me, believe in me, and understand that I alone am God. There is no other God. There never has been, and there never will be. You gotta fight. This is the time for it to happen, to everything to come out. I feel it, bro. You can't feel the power. Deontay. Energy. Oh, Deontay. Goodness. Radio Rahim. Oh Listen, man. Goodness. You you said that your people have been fighting for 400 on, years. Man. Your people too. So I just want you to explain your what you mean too. by that. You know what I'm talking about. Y'all all know what I'm talking about, man. Don't sit up here and try to bait and not know what I'm talking about. Y'all know what the f I talk about when I say these things. Your people, too. Explain it. I, I not everybody knows what you're talking about. Radio Raheem, I don't have to explain what's understood, man. You know what I mean by that. You know what I said by that. I ain't got to go further. And if nobody, if anybody don't understand that, then God be with them. Go look up the history. Go look up the history. It's don't everybody believe in Google? Go Google that shit. See what I'm talking about. You know what I'm talking about, man. You know what I dare you to sit up there and say, explain. You know what I'm talking about, man. His fighting people. You know we've been fighting 400 and still fighting to this day. To this day. To this day. You just sit here and you don't know what I'm talking about? Man, I'm out of here, bro. Let's go. Come on, let's, go. Wait, wait, wait. let's go, man. The Bible tells the story of a nation that have made a blood covenant with their God, Yah or Yao. Breaking the covenant would have a disastrous consequence on them. But what does this have to do with me? I would have been quite content with the books of the New Testament only. That is, if I wasn't observing that the consequences that would have been reserved for the covenant people transgressing against their God seems to have fallen upon my people on the African continent instead. Daniel chapter 9, verse 11 to 12. All Israel has transgressed your law and turned away, refusing to obey you. Therefore, the curses and sworn judgments written in the law of Moses, the servant of God, have been poured out on us because we have sinned against you. You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster. Under the whole heaven, nothing has ever been done like what has been done to Jerusalem.
imagine being torn from your whipping family as a result of ethnic warfare. And I believe it is now time to change the narrative as a result of kidnapping, forced to walk hundreds of miles until you reach the sea on the west African side of the Atlantic Ocean. You are stripped of your name, your identity, of every right a human being deserves. The European ship that you forced to board is headed across the Atlantic to Caribbean and South American plantations, a voyage through the awful Middle Passage. A multitude of black people of every description chained together with scarcely room to turn, traveling for months, seasick, surrounded by the filth of vomit-filled tubs into which children often fail, some suffocating, the shrieks of the woman and the groans of the dying renders the whole scene of horror almost inconceivable. Death and disease are all around and only one in six will survive this journey and the brutal back-breaking labor that follows. The transatlantic slave trade persisted for four centuries, 400 years. Slavery and the slave trade are among the worst violations of human rights in the history of humanity. The transatlantic slave trade was unique within the entire history of slavery. Due to its duration, 400 years, its scale, approximately 17 million people, excluding those who died during transports, and the legitimization accorded to it including under laws of the time. The transatlantic slave trade constituted the biggest deportation in history and is often referred to as the first example of globalization. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 16 to 19 This is what the Lord says about the king who sits on David's throne and all the people who remain in this city your fellow citizens who did not go with you into exile Yes, this is what the Lord Almighty says I will send the sword, famine and plague against them and I will make them like figs that are so bad they cannot be eaten. I will pursue them with the sword, famine, and plague, and will make them abhorrent to all the kingdoms of the earth, a curse and an object of horror, of scorn and reproach among all the nations where I drive them. For they have not listened to my word, declares the Lord, words that I sent to them again and again by my servants the prophets and you exiles have not listened either declares the lord interesting how history repeats itself why does the result of a broken covenant the result of a bitter divorce between another nation and its god seem to have foretold the very fireball and painful history of my people. In the first generation of colonialism, the conquerors often created famine. Early colonial warfare unashamedly employed extremely brutal methods. In his 1896 treatise, Small Walls, Their Principles and Practice, Charles Carwell wrote, 
where there is no king to conquer, no capital to seize, no organized army to overthrow, the objectives is not as easy to select. It is then that the regular troops are forced to resort to cattle lifting and village burning, and that the war assumes an aspect which may shock the humanitarian. Some people were subjugated with the intention of forcing them off land wanted for European plantations and farms. In the Sudan, especially in the south, punitive patrols confiscated large herds of cattle and destroyed villages during two decades of intermittent but savage violence against the resisting pastoral people. Scorched earth tactics by the retreating German army in Rwanda, Rundi also created famine in 1916-17. These depredations were mild compared with the savagery inflicted on the inhabitants of the Congo Free State in the last decades of the 19th century, which caused a halving of the population in many areas and the shattering of an entire political tradition. Asante kote kose Let's look towards the west coast of Africa where the Ashantis are giving hell to European expansion and forming a final barrier against European colonialism. Asantes are a formidable and dreadful adversary to ever face in war times. Total potential strength was some 80,000 to 200,000, making the Ashanti army bigger than the better known Zulu, comparable to Africa's largest, the legions of Ethiopia. The Ashanti army was described as a fierce, organized one whose king could bring 200,000 men into the field and whose warriors were evidently not cowed by Snyder rifles and seven pounder guns. Unique among African armies, the Ashanti deployed medical units to support their fighters. This force was to expand the entire empire substantially and continually for over a century and defeated the British in several encounters. Let's look into the book of Van der Voort, the citation is taken from. For General Worsley, and this is referring to Garnet Worsley, who in the year 1873 was given command of the expedition against Ashantis, and he was made administrator of the Gold Coast Protectorate. For British General Worsley, the looming War with the Ashantis fell into the category of small wars. Carwell would later label punitive. As might be expected from a very warlike, proud and barbarous people, our having left them, the Ashantis, unpunished for the invasion of our territory was attributed to cowardice. Such a condition of things always means war sooner or later. Pretty much he's saying here that um, they were coward for allowing the Ashantis to take over part of the coastal areas of the then Gold Coast, which they considered theirs. There is, however, a sense that the Ashantis were to be punished for crimes that ranged far beyond their current invasion of the Gold Coast protectorates. There were old wounds that required healing. McCarthy's defeat and decapitation in 1823. The 1864 debacle, if what was determined national dignity was to be preserved. 
The punishment of the Ashantis could also serve useful future purposes, was they believed. The Ashantis, he wrote, were the only dangerously strong native power in Western Africa. And until we had utterly defeated their army and taken Kumasi, we should never have any assured peace in our West African settlements. Worsley sensed that the eyes of all black Africa were fixed on the impending conflict with the Ashantis, that there were many Africans who thought, given what had happened in the past, that the Ashantis would win. The British then had something to prove. The die is cast. The Ashantis fear no one. After all, when the Supreme God and all the Abusums or deities are by our side, who can be against us? There was, however, a looming prophecy of old from priests of Kung Fu Tuda, who a hundred years prior prophesied that exactly a century from the time of his prophecy, a time would come when the Asante Hene, that is the Ashanti King, power would pass into the hands of the white man who lived far away beyond the great water. The white man would rule over the Asante nation with feathers and small sticks. The Asante chiefs were not pleased with his prophecy and ordered his execution. The time of the prophecy was now up. Na watu wa shemu so, te se okodye. Ewe ya omayi a monte wa onkasa. Omayi a wa onhuye hu. Na wakuma e prim. Na wongu openi, ini e humobro ma abofra. Na sila adombe tu wa shemu so, inye muane monobaye. So, na okom ademu yie ama mwe wu. Wali nye bro, ensa, engo, nenche ma, ana inye ma. Mamu, na namso ama mwase, wobetu ya mungkro pon yina kusise, mwafesu yo dinding a, mwode mwho to so, se ebebo mwho bany wo mwasa se so no, yina wobetu ya gufem. Wobetu wa she mkro a, wo asasi ya urade mwenye kupon, di ama mwho no so. Yo, man can never be hot. Perspiration tin, man can never be hot. Yo, man can never be hot. Boom, yo, ah.